Hi everyone, this is Nick, and today we'll be taking a look at the out-of-the-box setup for the ECM CASA 5. Now, I'll be covering some basic best practices to get this machine ready to brew and keep it safe for long-term use. We'll be taking a look at things like accessories, my recommendations for water filtration options, and a closer look at the operation of the buttons and LEDs on the front of the machine. So, let's get into it. Let's take a closer look now at the accessories that come with the CASA 5. So I'll start in the back and then make my way forward here. But starting on the left, we have our brew group brush. This is a very straightforward brush with some stiff nylon bristles. Simply use that to scrub coffee residue off of the shower screen and then up along the edge inside your group where your gasket is located. Now, this right here, this is a ground coffee scoop. It's approximately seven grams, maybe eight, if you go a little bit more on the heaping side of things, but I would recommend probably getting yourself a nice grinder and then maybe a scale to make sure that your dosing is a bit more accurate. Now, this here too, this is another accessory that comes in the box that I would recommend that you replace. It's a tamper, uh, and I will cover some better tamping options in a bit, so this you can probably say goodbye to. Now, Probably my favorite of the accessories, this is the chrome-plated brass dual-spout portafilter, the same one featured on the ECM Classica PID. This accepts the different portafilter baskets that we have. This is 58 millimeters, so that does mean that it will accept other custom 58 millimeter baskets if you're looking to do some upgrades, maybe with something, say, from Barista Pro, for instance. Now, stock, though, in the basket with the machine, actually, we've got the double shot basket right here, a commercial single shot basket, and then a back flush disc. So I'll be covering back flushing in another segment, but this is used to clean, probably in conjunction with your brush here. And then these two guys are used for brewing espresso. But those are the accessories that you can expect with your machine. The first step on many machines, as is the case with the CASA 5, is to take our reservoir out, give it a good rinse, and then put it back in the machine. So I have plugged this in, the power cord's right in the back. There are no additional switches other than the one that you can see on the front. So to get access to this reservoir, we'll simply lift off our reservoir cover, and then you'll see that it's somewhat tight inside the frame. That is because this is the same three liter reservoir that's found on ECM's other prosumer machines. It's just housed in a much more compact space. So there is a little bit of a gap here on what is my left side or on the right of the machine, as you can see. I'm just gonna tuck my fingers in and give that a little bit of a shimmy. There's just a gasket here on the inlet that's gonna give me a little bit of resistance. So with the reservoir out, I'm gonna go ahead, rinse this, fill it up, and then we'll get the machine primed and ready to brew. All right, so we've got our reservoir here and we'll simply gently put this back in. So you do wanna just kinda of slowly lower it and then make sure that the water inlet fits right in that socket and then just gently put that down. And there you may see some bubbles coming up from the inlet on the inside. So now the reservoir is secure. We'll go ahead and put the lid back on and then I'll head to the front of the machine and we can go ahead and get primed. Now that our water reservoir is rinsed and filled, we can go ahead and turn on the machine and we'll prime the boiler. But first I wanna take a quick look at the different buttons and LED lights that operate the machine. So in the top left here, that's our power button and then the associated power light. This turns the machine on and then the light lets us know that we've turned it on. So I'll go ahead and push that right now. The light is illuminated, but that green is gonna be a little bit harder to see than those other colors. So we have right next to it here, that's our brew switch. That's how we would brew espresso from the group. The light above that is simply the brew light, meaning that when we have the switch pressed, this light will illuminate. Underneath the power button is the steam button. That switches the machine from steaming mode to brewing mode or vice versa. So it will by default be in brew mode. If we push this, it goes to steam mode. This light just tells us that the boiler is receiving energy to heat, depending on which mode we're in. Our last button, and that's the one that we want to use, that's the pump switch. So that allows us to run hot water directly out of the steam wand, which is great if you need to do things like make tea or make a drink like an Americano, but it's also how we're gonna go ahead and prime the machine. So get a container. I've got a large frothing pitcher here and simply go ahead and get that positioned like so. We'll open our valve here. And then all we need to do is press this pump switch and the machine will start to draw water from the reservoir into the boiler. And when we get a solid stream of water starting to flow from that wand, 
we know that the boiler has been primed and it has enough water to brew. So I'll simply press that again. And as you can see, our light for heating has illuminated. We've got enough water in the boiler. Once that light turns off, that will let us know that we've reached brew temperature. And I just wanna make sure too that I've closed my valve here. And that's how you'd prime the ECM CASA 5. Now that our machine has been primed, we'll go ahead and install our portafilter. You'll typically want to have this portafilter in there at all times because as the machine is heating up in the morning, it's going to transfer heat to the chrome-plated brass in your portafilter as well. That keeps things nice and hot to maintain temperature stability. Now, inside of the portafilter head here, you can see this wire spring. That holds the baskets in there, so you really want to make sure that you don't lose that spring if you ever take baskets out for cleaning. I want to use the double shot basket, so to insert them, simply place them in the basket, give it a firm tap, and that will lock the basket inside the portafilter. Now we'll simply go ahead, lock the portafilter in the machine, and while I talk to you about water filtration, our portafilter will get nice and toasty. In general, it will take about five to seven minutes for your machine to reach brew temperature. That depends on a couple of variables, but five to seven is typically the range. And one thing that you'll note now is our heating element light has turned off, but you may see it come back on periodically. The way that a machine with a thermostat works is that the machine will heat to the set temperature, stop providing power to the thermostat, and then heat again as necessary. So if this light comes on and off while you're operating the machine, that's totally normal. So at this point, our machine is ready to brew, but I would be remiss if I didn't touch on one of the most important aspects of owning and maintaining your espresso machine, which is water quality. So here at Holate Love, we choose BWT as our filter of choice for our espresso machines. And the great thing is that we actually have a flexible array of options that work for filtering water to use in the ECM CASA 5. Just as a general overview, water filters are going to remove contaminants that can affect flavor, and BWT in particular has a technology that reintroduces magnesium, which helps with the overall taste of your coffee. But more importantly, these filters will treat the water to prevent limescale buildup. Limescale buildup is of course one of the most common causes of damage to espresso machines. So. If you've got hard water or you ever see some of that scale building up on your faucets, your pots and pans, or say your shower head, that's going to get inside the machine too. But we've got a nice array of products here that I'll take a look at to show you how to protect your CASA 5 from lime scale. For our first option for water filtration, we have the BWT Penguin Pitcher. Now, this is a drinking water pitcher, but with that twist, this cartridge here will actually reintroduce magnesium into the water for your espresso, but it will also remove lime scale from the water as well. So that's not something that you really have to worry about if you're just drinking water, but if you're filling your machine, you want to get that calcium filtered out. Now to activate this filter, you'll simply put it in the water for about five minutes, drain that out, put it inside our filter assembly up top, rinse a little bit more water through, and then you're good to start filling to fill your machine. One of the most convenient things about the Penguin is the little counter here on the top. That triggers for one of two reasons. First is that it will count the number of times that you've filled the pitcher. So every time that the center is depressed, it counts that as water being entered into the pitcher. Now it's either that, or if a certain amount of time has elapsed between fills, the Penguin will let you know that you need to replace your cartridge to ensure that your water is safe to drink. This is a great option for somebody who doesn't want to have to actively remember to change their filter or to replace it inside the tank, which is something that we'll do with the best cup. So for somebody who's looking for a affordable and convenient solution to water filtration, definitely take a look at the BWT Penguin. For our second water filtration option, we have the BWT Best Save. So this is a filter pouch. So there's actually our filtration inside the pouch here. And all we do is we go ahead and drop that into the reservoir. Now, because there's no water being actively pulled through this, it needs to actually sit in the filter from about eight to 10 hours to effectively filter all of the water. Now, in terms of capacity, there's a couple of ranges actually listed right here on the bag. Basing this off of the three and a half liter reservoir, which is slightly bigger than the one that we have in the Casa 5, this is good for anywhere from 15 to 29 fills of that reservoir. So 
This is a three liter reservoir. Let's say you've got softer water, so we're going more for that 29. That's enough to get you through this filter's whole lifespan because this at max, the recommendation is two months by BWT and then you replace it to make sure that the water is still safe to drink. But the BWT best save is a very simple option if you're simply going to be refilling this, you have no need for filtered water for other purposes and it's cheap and easy to use. For our final water filtration option, we have the BWT Best Cup system. So this is a filter that will actually be connected to your water inlet on your machine. So it will actively pull water through the layers of filtration, allowing you to simply refill the reservoir and have filtered water to brew with. So there are a couple of components that we're going to take a look at here. The first is actually the cartridge, which does the heavy lifting for the filtering. But next to that, we have the components for our filter adapter. This is what allows us to connect it to that water inlet. Now, this piece here, this is our adapter. We have the socket where the filter actually fits in. We have the adapter piece here that connects to the water inlet on the machine. And then we actually have the water intake for the filter. So this is where water gets pulled in and starts the filtration process. So we also have our suction cup here. We'll go ahead and fit that right in. This is what's going to allow us to attach our adapter to the bottom of the tank. And then we'll go ahead and connect our inlet tube here as well. And you can see there's just a little bit of ribbing on that piece right there. We'll go right over that first bit. And now our tube is secure. So inside the tank, there is a small metal inlet that you can see. That's a little bit of a raised indentation. What we're going to do is we're going to take this silicone tube and we're going to fit that right over the top of there. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like. And if your uh, adapter is wet like mine is, it may slip out. So just make sure that you've got that firmly secure in there. So go right on ahead. And now, as you can see, I have fit the tube over the inlet. Now, there is going to be just a little bit of doing here to make sure that we can get this positioned properly so that we've got our tube without any kinks in it and that we can fit our filter cartridge in. So I like to do this here where I actually have the adapter socket kind of in that corner there. We've got our tube. It's angled, but there's no kinks. And then what we can do is now simply go ahead and take our cartridge and put that right in there. So now we have the entirety of our adapter system in here. And if you want, you can just go right on in again, give that a little push on that suction cup again, but now we have the filter cartridge in there. So basically this is a great option if say you don't want to have to wait for the filtration from the best save, or if you don't want to have to use that pitcher, say you already have a drinking water pitcher, you don't want to buy another one, or maybe you just don't remember to refill that pitcher, you're simply adding water to the reservoir instead, and then the best cup is doing your filtration for you. So if you intend to use the machine a lot and you really are gonna use a lot of that filtered water, this is probably the best option. And then to simply replace, you'll go ahead, grasp that, remove it, and then you can add a new cartridge in its place when you're all done. And that's how you would install the BWT Best Cup. That covers our water filtration options, but if you decide that you don't want to invest in a water filter, you can do something else which is called descaling. So descaling your espresso machine uses an acidic cleaning solution to break down the built up minerals on the inside. So again, those minerals will build up in places like your boiler, on the internal plumbing, and even in your group and shower. So it's important to note though that with descaling, it's something that you have to commit to kind of like changing the oil in your car. If you start descaling, you're going to want to keep doing that on a regular basis. That's also going to come down to how hard your water is and how frequently you brew, but it could be as frequent as every three months descaling the machine. Because what can happen is if you don't keep up with regular descaling and you have mineral buildup that becomes substantial, if some of those minerals get loosened up during the process, you can actually wind up clogging some of the smaller water passageways with pieces of scale. So again, I strongly recommend that you simply save yourself the headache and go ahead and get yourself something to filter the water. Not only are you protecting your machine from lime scale buildup, but you're also improving the taste of your water. Now, as a final note on our descaler, you do want to make sure that if you buy something like the Dergal Swiss Espresso Descaler that I have here, that it has been calibrated specifically for use in espresso machines. 
Back in the front of the machine now, let's take a look at our pressure gauge. So this is the brew pressure, or they have the word pompa here, pump pressure gauge. So what that's going to tell us is actually the pressure at the group during our extraction. So we've got a lot of resistance that we've created here at the group. We are aiming for about nine bar. Now, I will show you as well though, how you can tell where your pump is set for its stock pressure. So out of the box, we reset these to around 10 bar before shipping them out to ensure that you can get a good nine bar of pressure during your espresso extraction. Now, to actually see how the machine's pressure has been set, we're gonna use our back flush disc. So first, let's go ahead though and pop out the existing basket. This is great because all you need to do is simply take this or maybe your single basket, for instance, line it up along that tab right there, and it gives you the leverage to simply pry out the existing basket. Now we'll go ahead and put our back flush disc in, and we'll lock the portafilter into the group. So one thing that I do wanna make note of here is that because there's no uh, way for the water to actually flow down through the portafilter at this point and through the spouts, two things are going to happen. First is that inside the machine, there's a return line that will redirect some of the water that we're pumping back into our reservoir. But there's also a valve that's part of this group's assembly that will redirect water down here into the drip tray. So there's a little tube that's hidden behind this panel. And let me demo that for you right now. And you can see it spurting out in there. And so that's what's called a three-way solenoid valve. And that's actually part of the reason why this machine can brew such great shots of espresso with nice tidy pucks to clean up afterwards because that pressure is relieved from the group and then that water goes down and into the tray. So let's take a look though at the gauge now. With the back flush disc in, that will start to climb our pressure needle up and we can see where the pump is set. And so, as you can see, we're at 10 bar. But let's say that we wanted to make an adjustment to the pressure, or that it wasn't set to 10 bar for some reason when you received your machine. Well, all we need to do is simply remove our reservoir lid, which gives us access to the back of the cup tray, and then give that a little shimmy. And right here, we've got our adjustment screw for the OPV. Now that I have my screwdriver handy, let's go ahead and take a look at the OPV. So it can be adjusted using a flathead screwdriver or the manual states a coin. I find here in the United States, a dime or a penny will also do the trick if you want to make that adjustment. So let's say though that we do want to adjust brew pressure. Well, the best way to know what we're adjusting to is simply to run our brew switch again and then take a look at the pressure gauge as we're making that change. I'll show you how to do that right now. So we'll start, our needle will climb. I'll get my screwdriver situated. And so turning the screw to the left is actually relieving the pressure. So we're going lower and we can get down, down, down. You can get pretty far down as far as that pressure goes. I'm going down to six. You would never really want to brew espresso uh, at something like that. But if you ever wanted to experiment with like a uh, light extraction for like a coffee shot or something, you know? Wanna do something a little weird? I'm all about that. So let's leave that at 10 though. And that's how you would adjust the OPV on the Casa 5.